involved. What manner of person ought you to be? Okay? It did have a beginning. In the NIV and the NASB, and also in the New King James, there is no beginning and there is no end. It's simply the age, the age, the age, the age, the age, the end of the age. Okay, so we have the new age notion of cyclical time, a series of ages. In the year 2000, then, we go into the Aquarian age, and we simply change the page on our calendar. <clears throat> Not only do they teach the new age, but they actually have the word new age in them. In the Good News Bible, they actually use the word new age, and they capitalize new age, okay? All through the contemporary English version, the new century, in, in uh, Matthew 19 at least, they've got the word new age or new world, or in, in Hebrews 9.10, they've got the new order. NIV, Good News um, Amplified, new order, all the way through there. So when the King James says at the time of Reformation, it was talking about when Jesus Christ died on the cross, the temple was rent, okay, the sacrifices aren't going to be made anymore. However, in the new versions, um, it says <coughs> that the old order has gone, the new order has already begun. So in Hebrews 9.10, where the King James says, the time of reformation, it says in the NIV, the time of the new order. And I think what's going to happen there is that prophecy we have in Daniel 9, where it says, uh, in the midst of the week um, shall the sacrifice and oblation cease. And then in Thessalonians, it says he sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. I think the sacrifice will cease, and he will sit in the temple of God. And then, looking at NIV, and it says, until the time of the new order. And so it's not when Jesus died on the cross, it's when the new order comes in. <clears throat> okay. Now, people may say to you, um, you know, believing in the King James Bible, um, is divisive, or they may say to you, <clears throat> that's usually something that you use. And I'd like to give you a couple examples of verses that might help you. The first is 1 Corinthians 1.10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you. So the idea there in Corinthians is that if everyone speaks the same thing, there is no division. So, to believe that King James is the pure, preserved Word of God, to believe that there's just one Bible, that's the way to keep from having division. The interesting thing happens in 1 Corinthians 10. It says, talking about the people in the Old Testament, it says they did all eat the same spiritual meat. They all ate the same spiritual drink. Philippians says, walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. It's always same, 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 same. Uh, we are partakers of that one bread. Okay? And so, using a lot of different versions really isn't scriptural. In the Old Testament... It talks about the mouth of the prophets. Now, it's one mouth, numerous prophets. You will never see the plural used in the Old Testament or in the scriptures referring to the mouth. It's not mouths. It's mouth of the prophets. However, when they talk about the, the unsaved people, they use singular and plural, the mouths of the prophets. Uh, if someone tells you, well, it might not be there where you showed me, but it's somewhere else, I'd remind them of Jeremiah 26 that says, Hmm. Diminish not a word. So we're not allowed to take one word out of the Bible. Um, and I remind that when Jesus fed the 5,000, after it was over, he said, Gather the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Now, can you imagine the creator of the universe sending everyone scurrying around in the grass to get little scraps of bread? All right, he could have made the universe in another second, okay? But if he was so concerned about those little fragments of bread, which were mere typologies of the word of God, which is our bread, he isn't going to lose one single word of the Bible. You know, the word is the light unto my path. In Luke 11, it says, having no part dark. So we wouldn't want any part of our Bible to be dark. In Philippians, it says, to write the same thing unto you to me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. So if there's some repetition in the King James Bible, it's not grievous to have it repeated in there. It's safe. All right. <laughs> um, and when someone says to you, well, the Greek actually says, or something like this, I'd like to remind them that cults always move the authority away from the Bible. They'll take you to the Book of Mormon. They'll take you to Mary Baker's Eddie, Eddie's book. But they'll take you to another book. And this is what people will do. They will not believe that God has given us a pure, preserved English Bible. They'll take you to a Greek lexicon. And I would remind those people that the Scripture is of no private interpretation. All the lexicons disagree with one another. 
All right? And so that would mean that the Word of God is scattered around in all the Greek dictionaries of the whole world. Now, if you study the lives of some of the gentlemen who wrote these Greek lexicons, you will find that they were, for the most part, unsaved liberals. Okay? Now, they couldn't change the law in many cases, so they changed Black's Law Dictionary. And you will find that in those lexicons,